This is the DJI Air 2S, which has prompted a fairly major change in the way the camera settings are laid out. So just a quick update today on getting the most out of the camera and also a quick look at what to do when you accidentally delete or corrupt your SD card. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and a very quick video today outlining the main features of the new camera settings uh, layout for the Air 2 and the Air 2S as I've had a couple of Air 2 owners contacting me saying they couldn't amend the resolution on their pictures and video anymore. Now I did do a video recently on the Mini and the Mini 2 and I'll put a link uh, to that up here. But today I'm going to focus on the Air 2 and the Air 2S. I also want to do some uh, first on this channel and uh, mention something where I have actually been contacted and asked if I would do a mini review. Now, you would not believe how much completely unrelated and useless stuff gets emailed to me asking me for uh, reviews. But this particular app was a program that I was actually already using because it's actually a really useful bit of kit to uh, retrieve uh, deleted pictures and videos from SD cards or your main PC or Mac drive. So here you are, Recovery, which is easily the most user-friendly and powerful app I have found for retrieving pictures and videos that I've accidentally deleted. And yes, I have done that. When I was on holiday in Malta last year, I'd cleared the SD card, I got my folders mixed up on the laptop, and then I deleted the entire folder of pictures and video from my laptop, leaving me with absolutely nothing. Anyway, look, the idea is simple enough. You chuck your SD card into your laptop or computer, you let it do its scan for a couple of minutes, and then you can view all the deleted files in a simple, easy to use file explorer layout. You can preview pictures and videos, choose which ones you want to recover, and as long as you haven't re-recorded loads of new stuff overwriting the old files, you can click recover and they're actually restored as if you hadn't deleted them in the first place. And for me, the advanced package has the insanely useful video recovery and repair tool that actually fixes damaged or corrupted video files that can happen if they were being recorded when the drone is switched off or worse, if it crashes. So for me, this is an extremely useful part of the app. Anyway, that's it, that's all I wanna say. Super quick overview. As ever, I'll put a link below. Uh, they have got a yearly price or for just under twice the yearly price, you get a lifetime license. So that's what I went for. But the bottom line is I use it, I love it, and hence I've chosen to recommend it on this video. Anyway, look, now onto the camera settings. So look, as I said, the last app update changed the layout of the camera settings and moved much of them to the bottom of the screen uh, when, when you're using the Fly app. Now, a few people have complained that it's actually made them a lot harder to access if you've got your phone in the uh, remote phone holder. I guess it kind of depends on what type of phone you use. I mean, I haven't had much issue with my LG uh, because it's got nice curved edges, but uh, like I said, it probably depends on your phone. Either way, first off, make sure you've updated to the latest Fly app, uh, version 1.0. 4.0. Uh, Android users, you may need to allow installation of the app from outside the Google Play Store. You're still going to set the basic camera controls in the main settings. You tap the three dots top right, scroll across to the camera and then scroll down and you can choose your color format. Uh, normal is fine uh, for most people. D-Log is flatter but better if you're going to be adjusting things in Premiere Pro or similar program afterwards. Other settings like the histogram and the overexposure, they're useful on-screen indicators for when you're actually filming and they'll show whether or not your lighting is right. And focus peaking is a useful tool to ensure the subject is actually in focus. And I did a separate little video on that in my initial setup video. Cache whilst recording will stream a lower resolution video to your phone as you fly, which is nice if you want to play things back as soon as you land. But look, the main update focuses with the settings on screen. You still swap between stills and video using the physical button top right on the remote control or the on-screen button above the shutter button. And this is where you will also choose what type of picture or video you take. So I tend to find this is more useful because at the top, you've got photo for stills. And with that selected, you get a further menu pop up offering the standard single shot, smart, which is a, uh, that's useful for taking pictures 
filters in low or difficult lighting settings, and then AEB or uh, auto exposure bracketing which is a function that takes three or five near identical shots at different exposure levels for you to merge and combine in Photoshop. So it's kind of a manual way, if you like, for achieving what you get automatically with the smart uh, photo function. The last two options are also burst, which will take three to seven stills in very quick succession for fast moving subjects. And finally, you've got a timer option so you can uh, hide the remote control when you're taking that uh, droney selfie. All the additional settings for still pictures are handled in the new section at the bottom of the screen and I will go through that in a minute. But going back to the first menu, uh, the next function you've got is video and with this selected you're going to get to choose standard or slow-mo, again with all the other settings like resolution set down below. The next option if you have the Air 2S is Master Shots which is DJI's newest feature that combines a series of quick shots to make a mini movie for you around a central subject. Quick shots are pre-programmed manoeuvres the drone can make around a central subject and I do want to do a separate video on quick shots and master shots as otherwise this is going to be an incredibly long video but for now this is where you set them up and if you play with them only a quick bit of advice I'd give you is make sure you've got a lot of space around you as it's very easy to fly sideways into a tree when you're playing with those modes. And then finally you've got hyperlapse and panorama and I did a detailed tutorial on hyperlapse a few months ago and it's a really easy way to get uh, a set of identical videos that you can then take at different times of the day or even the year and then blend to create a really striking video that transforms the scenery before your eyes and uh, again I'll put the quick link, uh, link to that video uh, up there for you. So that's the main modes offering the type of picture or video that you're uh, filming or taking. Now I want to focus quickly on how you can adjust the settings for each type. If you're in video mode, then the resolution and frame rate have now been moved to a new home along the bottom screen under res and FPS or resolution and frames per second. Video resolution and the frame rate are now set by sliders, which you can move left and right to select the value that you want. If you're in standard video mode, you can choose the video resolution of ultra, ultra high definition, uh, 5.4K if you've got the Air 2S, uh, or 4K, 2.7, or 1080 if you've got the um, Air 2S and the Air 2. My advice is still not to always necessarily go for the highest resolution. The file size is huge and many PCs and laptops will simply struggle to play 4K. Uh, most people find 2.7K is absolutely uh, stunning definition and more than enough for their needs. This is also where you set the frame rate too. To a certain extent, frame rate is a personal choice. I tend to use 25 frames per second. I think most uh, creators over in the US tend to use 30 frames per second. Either way, pretty much all TVs and monitors these days can handle both uh, frame rates, so I do believe it's pretty much your choice. You can go up to 60 frames per second uh, for some resolutions, but if you have selected slow-mo in the main setting, then it will default you to 1080p resolution and 120 frames per second for you. Next up is auto versus pro camera mode, and this is another change. And you can see which mode you're in with the indicator down in the bottom right. As you'd expect, auto pretty much handles most of the settings automatically for you. But if you tap the icon, it then opens up pro camera mode where you can change things manually. You've got two sets of adjustments depending on whether or not you're in still picture mode or video mode. Uh, many settings are actually common to both video and still pictures like ISO, shut speed and white balance. Uh, for those that don't know, ISO is the sensitivity of the sensi sensor to light. And to be honest, unless you're filming in very, very low light, I find taking it out of its auto setting and locking it to 100 gives me the very best quality and the least grainy noise. Faster shutter speed means less light getting in and so a darker picture. And whilst that's quite straightforward, you can actually have a lot of fun with white balance. White balance adjusts the color sensitivity of the sensor to balance out different types of background light. Sunshine is a very warm light, uh, white clouds like I've got today or LED lighting can be a little bit cooler. So white balance on here lets you adjust this to compensate for that type of light. You've now got a nice sliding scale to adjust the white balance in degrees Kelvin. And basically the higher the K value you set, the more the sensor is adjusting for cold light. And so the warmer the resulting picture looks. 
I have mentioned before, some people do think they've got the scale the wrong way around because a higher K value normally represents a colder light. Remember, you're adjusting the sensitivity of the sensor to compensate for colder light, which is why the resulting picture ends up looking warmer. And this, I think, is where you can have some really uh, cool fun with uh, white balance and shutter speed. Because as long as you have locked the ISO, which is important, you can then turn a fairly standard sunrise or sunset into a much redder picture by speeding up the shutter speed to make that picture slightly darker and adjusting the white balance to make the picture warmer and redder. Of course, you can make these adjustments in any editing software like Photoshop or Premiere Pro. But I like messing around with the settings whilst I'm actually flying the drone itself, and it does mean less adjusting and editing afterwards. But as ever, look, it's a personal choice. Just do whatever works for you. But a few other points. If you're in the still picture mode, uh, you'll see the options to store pictures in JPEG and RAW along the bottom. Now, RAW files are not compressed. They give you way more editing options in Photoshop or Lightroom, but they will also take up far more space. So if you don't use those editing programs, you may want to stick to just uh, recording in uh, JPEGs only. Uh, another key point for filming smooth uh, video is to make sure you've got soft and gentle camera movements. Now I did a useful video on smoothing out the gimbal and camera movements about a month or two ago. Uh, as ever, I'll put another little link up there for you, but uh, you really should watch it I think because softer gimbal movements are the easiest but I think most important adjustments that you can make when uh, you're making uh, changes to the settings to get super smooth video. So look, probably a longer video than I meant to go through today, but hopefully you've got some useful stuff for you to get some pretty good results with your pictures and videos. Remember, if you do find it useful, give me a little thumbs up, always helps, and uh, ding the dong if you want to get notified when I put new stuff out. If you also click on my channel now, you'll see a new join option where you can join up with me and help support my channel if you want. You can get in touch directly and see some of the behind the scenes stuff and outtakes that normally happen as a result of filming with dogs in the background but you'll also be able to get advice uh, directly from me if you want if you want if you're having any issues drone related um, so yeah as I said check out the option up to you but look hopefully this sort of video has given you enough advice anyway and you'll have uh, all of the knowledge now to get some really good decent results as we roll into summer I hope most of you are making the most of the uh, good weather when it's hitting but look wherever you are and whatever you're doing until next time stay safe and sane have fun happy flying